added Elon Musk when he did his, you know, Falcon Heavy boosting his red roaster into orbit. They gave him a set of quartz uh, okay. storage units that have incredible image uh, and information density. And he's talking. I've been trying to get hold of those. Say again? I've been trying to get a hold of those for my library. My library is worth that kind of consideration. Well, heard we, about them. we are trying to reach those people because I want to have one of them on the air and talk about because they're talking about archives in other places in the solar system, including yes. geosynchronous orbit on the moon, right. on spacecraft that go to Mars, whatever, so that if something happens to our current civilization, there will be records and archives scattered around the solar system so that the future can pick up where we left off. Or continue. Or continue. Yeah. It's, remember, we don't Chandra. learn anything. We've never learned anything. We just remember what we knew. And that is what Plato said. Okay, I'm going to have to... I'm, hang on, hang on. I need to challenge you on that. What do you mean by that? And Well, that means that Plato said that when we were born, we knew everything. And in the process of being born, we forget everything. Are we talking so past just, life memories? Just, yeah, that's right. And that's the reason why I don't go for past life or future life. Because... We're just living ready, the moment. We're life. here for this this uh, metaphysical experience to learn that we all need to get Hell along. Yeah. You know, the truth is the people in North Africa are not less intelligent than we are. The problem Hell is when we give truth. them the IQ test, it's made for white people, it's made for Europeans and Americans. So those people in North Africa, the smartest man I ever met, and I spent some years Hell at Harvard yeah. and I've spoken at Oxford twice, was a black man from Nigeria, and I saw him personally do seven term papers in one night with references, page numbers, and he was and his wife was typing them all out, <laughs> and he got straight A's on all seven of them, and he didn't even proofread them. And I did one that night, and I was very proud of myself. He did seven in one night, and he worked at the library, and he would read at the library, and he just remembered everything. One time I was flying down to New York with the with uh, Clifford Frondell's wife. He was the head of the, uh, the the geology department at Harvard. And I walked into her Re -re office and she was looking at this four inch thick book. And we were having to head off to get the airport, right? So I'm sitting in the plane reading my book and I'm looking over to her and I said, why didn't you just bring a book to read? She said, I did. Didn't you see the book I was looking at at my desk before I left? So she flipped through it, and she was reading it on the way to New York in her head. She had photographically remembered every page in the book, and she was just now reading. That's, you know, there are smart people everywhere. You never know where you're going to meet them. So listen. You know, I'm 69. I, I talk too much, but I've spent a lot of time listening. And a lot of time reading and most time, the best teacher in the world is travel. There's Books are wonderful. And I've owned some of the rarest books in the world. I sold the first, uh, I sold a copy of the Constitution. Tell you what, hold it there. We're at the top of the hour. Yeah. My, my guest this morning is Joe Gill. Never mind. And we're kind I'll of ranging movie. the gamut of generalist generalist uh, conversation you know it's uh, my grandma used to talk about heifers anyway joe and i are going to talk about hawaii i guarantee you we're going to talk about hawaii i want to talk about his travels i mean you just mentioned this fascinating okay. individual Let's he met a new route. in africa someone else on a plane i want to dip Keep a bit left, more into that and then turn left. you're on the other side of midnight my name is richard c hoagland turn and left. we shall return
Thanks for listening to this exciting first hour. Now, the second and third hour of the show is available to Club 19.5 members only. Please support the show by subscribing to Club 19.5 and join our very interesting community. To do that, please visit the website, theothersideofmidnight.com, and click on the Join Club 19.5 link in the left-hand column. As a Club 19.5 member, you'll gain access to the rest of this show and all previous 350-plus shows that we have done. Now, recent Club 19.5 member archive recording have the commercials removed and the sound quality has been enhanced. You'll also receive a dedicated private podcast feed that contains these enhanced show recordings. And you'll be able to download the MP3 files directly from the archive if you prefer. As a Club 19.5 member, you'll have access Keep to a right private chat server and then exit that member right. used to chat about the show, during the show, and you will have a direct channel exit to post a question right. that will be read on the air to the guest. And you'll have a place to post questions during our open hailing frequencies. We realize that not everyone wants to call in live. And this gives you an easy way to participate in a live show without having to participate. Club 19.5 members can use this private chat to talk about the shows, ask questions, suggest new guests. And I may even pop on from time to time to answer specific questions. Also, the entire bridge crew is in these participating chat channels so you can interact with them as well. You'll also be the first to preview our new videos and reports. We'll be adding exclusive new features to Club 19.5 as we go forward. And boy, have we got some amazing things to tell you about in the coming weeks. So please support the show and don't miss all the exciting new things we have planned. I want to thank all our Club 19.5 members because without your guys' support, this show would not be on the air. Please help us continue growing the show by subscribing to Club 19.5 today. And when I say we really need you, we really need you. Over and out. Get ready to turn right. Turn right. It was a nice ride. Let's do this. And good morning, everyone, or good evening, or good afternoon, depending upon where, whether you're in the Far East or in the Pacific or in Europe or on the top of uh, Mount Everest, if you're listening to us there. You know, we have people, if you go to the other side of midnight and you look at that globe, we have people logging on from every possible place on the planet. Now, I won't say like a uh, doctor, a uh, doctor, like General Mattis did the other night at the... Um, uh, dinner in, in, in New York, Turn every left. corner of the globe, because <clears throat> globes don't have corners, just a, just a little nitpick there, but uh, we literally have listeners from all over, 100 and some 90, 190 some countries, I think. Get ready. So to welcome turn one right. and all in any time zone, any particular weather or climate you're currently experiencing. Turn right. Tonight we're going to be doing something dangerous. Every time I get on this show into areas of political concern, I get hate mail. And I did some not really overtly political stuff with Rick Levine a couple, uh, three weeks ago. We were discussing, you know, the age we're living in, why uh, this current president is unlike any other and I got really amazing email that was uh, on the on the very um, negative side uh, from Trump supporters, people who think that I'm unfairly attacking the president. Hey, let me clue you in on something. As Mick Mulvaney said the other afternoon in the White House press room, get over it. We have something called the First Amendment. It comes before the Second Amendment for a reason. 
without the freedom to express our opinions, to present facts, to present research, to prevent some kind of logical assessment of the state of the planet, which we're going to try to do tonight, I mean, what's the point of the whole damn thing? And for people to get so excised because I say a, a bad or a rude word about the president, the president is a public person. No one except Donald Trump volunteered to run for the presidency of the United States and have 300 plus million people judging and critiquing and looking at what he's doing on our behalf 24-7. It's the perfectal, perfectal, <laughs> not really. It's the perfectly logical way the system is designed to work. He does stuff, we look at it, we render our opinions. Some of them are positive. I mean, I don't know whether anybody out there, any Trump supporters, have tallied up the number of times I've said supportive things for this president. That's not going to be the case tonight, because the case we're in tonight is so perilous by the president's own decision. No one that we're aware of pressed him into what he has done, and the doors he has opened, and the cascade of history that may flow from his one phone call. I mean, I, I really, when I wrote the promo for Blog Talk, I was reminded of the cascade of idiotic events that led us into the first global war, World War I. And that night, I had the benefit of uh, Dr. Richard Spence to kind of walk us through that cascade of insanity that led to millions of people dying. It's really shocking how history can turn on a phrase or on someone going into a sandwich shop for, you know, roast beef or something as trivial, I mean, incredibly trivial. In this case, hopefully we're going to come out the other side like we went in, which is in okay condition, but you never can be sure because now we are in the nuclear age as you are going to see tonight. Before we get to... Uh, my guest, let me hit, you, hit a couple of uh, high spots here with news. If you go to the other side of midnight.com, click on that beautiful banner that can be prepared um, regarding Trump, Erdogan, and the Tsar. I hope you all caught that little reference. You know, the Tsar, of course, is Putin, a modern 21st century Tsar of, of Russia. As I will obviously get feedback from uh, Rick uh, Spence. If I'm not correct in that assessment, but I think I am, I think you could definitely uh, tabulate the things the Tsar used to do with the things that Putin is doing and make kind of a one-to-one -one correlation, particularly when he says of his own volition that the worst part of Russian history was when the Soviet Union was disbanded uh, in 1991, and that's a very Tsarist uh, point of view. Anyway. Um, if you go to that banner, which is for tonight, October 20th, it has Erdogan and Trump and Putin there at the lower left-hand corner. Click on that. That will take you to tonight's guest page, same banner, and just uh, either click on my items right under where it says uh, fast link items. Click on me. That will take you to my section of radio with pictures. The top two items, again, are the Bahamas. I do Go not want on. these desperate people in their desperate situation to be forgotten. The news, you know, the news gods had moved on. Uh, Hurricane Dorian is like it was a thousand years ago. We don't hear about it. We don't see it. We don't see the pictures. We don't see the tragedy. We don't see the anguish of families and, and you know, the, the Nagasaki-like conditions where that Category 5 hung over those islands for two full days grinding the surface into dust so if you go to that first link you'll see some of those heartbreaking pictures the second link is your action items there's a whole listing of charities there project hope team rubicon the bahama red cross etc etc click on one of those or search out for your own and send them you know any any just five bucks if you multiply five bucks by a million people that's five million dollars to buy food and bottled water and ways to cook food and sanitation and all of the accoutrements that you need when civilization around you has been totally destroyed. 
And there are echoes to some things we're going to talk about later tonight because this could happen to all of us. We are poised on the brink of an historical set of events that if, 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 if the dice are cast wrongly, we could be, everyone listening to my voice right now, could be in the same situation as those poor Bahamians, except it would be Sands Hurricane. It could be because of a global thermonuclear war. We are so much closer than anyone seems to believe. And we're going to get into the details and what you know is being done and what might be done. And this morning, I hope, will be a very educational um, experience for everyone. Item number three. I keep looking back and I keep thinking of how history turns on these incredibly trivial, random little things that set in motion Keep enormous right, forces. And then exit right. And there's got to be some underlying metaphysics to that. Um, again, we're probably going to discuss that this exit. morning. Right. This is a news item from Fox. You know, we try to present all sides here. And uh, Fox had a story, a very important story, how, according to background sources, military sources in this case, in the Pentagon. Turn right. Where things went off the rails was when the president went off script during his call on Sunday, the 6th of October, to Erdogan, the president of Turkey. He had a list of talking points. He had a list of things that he was supposed to stay with. That's what advisors and expertise surrounding the executive branch is supposed to bring to the president, an enormous amount of expertise, literally hundreds of man years of expertise and in this phone call apparently the president simply dismissed all that didn't tell anybody he was going to basically say to Erdogan well we're, we're just going to kind of leave and you guys can clean up what you've always wanted to do now why do we say that with such certitude because several days ago on the tarmac at uh, in Fort Worth when he was down there with a rally the president stood in front of television cameras and he basically said the same thing you know the Turks have been long-suffering, and they've wanted to do this for a long time, and now this will give them the chance to clean out the area, which is incredibly um, tendacious when it comes to the concepts of ethnic cleansing, Get ready mass turn murder, etc. I mean, this this requires turn deep left. and important analysis, which we're going to try to... Uh, with the help of Dr. Spence, do tonight. Now, if you don't think the stakes are important, you want to go to point number four, my item number four. There has been published, you know, as part of a declassification that this government has been operating under for decades, there is a um, extraordinary report from the nonprofit National Security Archive, which has documents from the U.S. government going back through the Cold War, back to the beginnings uh, in the early 1960s when people like uh, General Curtis LeMay, who was uh, head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, basically said about the Soviet Union and China in terms of Chinese communists and the potential for nuclear war with both the Soviets and the Chinese, bomb them back to the Stone Age. And when you read these documents, I mean, they're extraordinarily relevant to Go our situation on. now because some of them in question pertain to what was called the Single Integrated Operational Plan or PSYOP which governs the numerous war plans and their associated options that basically determine how Americans would fight a nuclear war and in June of 1964 senior military leaders including Air Force Chief of Staff uh, LeMay were sent a staff review of the current then PSYOP and there were extraordinary recommendations, such as in order to destroy the will and ability of the Sino-Soviet bloc to wage war, remove the enemy from the category of a major industrial power, and assure a post-war balance of power favorable to the United States. Should these options give more stress to populations as the main target, asked a question. The answer was the Pentagon war plans included the deliberate destructions of cities of millions of people which would destroy the urban and industrial backbone 
of these communist nations. Quote, again from the PSYOP, this would result in greater population casualties in that a larger proportion of the urban population, meaning in these two countries, may be placed at risk. In other words, if you look at the casualty numbers projected, they were looking at a 30% fatality rate as a goal for 217 I'm sorry, 212 million people Keep right, um, and then in exit uh, right. uh, Russia and 709 million in China. Um, exit. I mean, these are right. staggering, incomprehensible, immoral numbers. And if you're looking at a nuclear war, whether it's by deliberate design or it's by accident, um, that's what you're facing. And that at some level, as we're going to talk about tonight, because of what the president has done in Syria, that is the potential that we could be facing as a cascade of increasingly bizarre decisions and or blunders take place in the next few weeks or months, because unless you have a stable plan and a status quo ante in place, which is what our thousand troops in cooperation with the Kurds in northern Syria for the last half decade had been maintaining, once you begin to move major powers into new regions where other powers are trying to confront them, i.e. Get ready American dominance left. of the Middle East versus Russian dominance of the Middle East, you are looking at an extraordinarily unbalanced and frankly unpredictable situation where, I mean, in chaos theory, in theory, it only depends on the flight of one butterfly on the other side of the world to change a hurricane. Speaking of natural disasters, item number five, there's been a new study out of California that the uh, uh, one of the California faults, if it really let loose, could create in the not too distant future an eight magnitude earthquake. And you want to read that carefully because this is a serious study. Um, we have been overdue for a major earthquake um, for many, 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 many years in California. Um, the last one that occurred was out in the desert, and in fact, it was under China Lake under suspicious circumstances. This is where it ends. It was a six, give or take. An eight, I believe, if I remember the Richter scale correctly, an eight would be 100 times greater. It would level major parts of Los Angeles or San Francisco, depending upon the distance to the epicenter. And again, you'd be in the same position if you don't go through that, that the Bahamians tonight on those two northern islands are, where they have no power, no water, no food, no electricity, no anything. So go back to those top links, click on those charity organizations, and please give whatever you can. Um, my guest tonight is Dr. Richard Spence, a professor of history at the University of Idaho, his interests include Russian and military history, along with espionage, occultism, and anti-Semitism. His major public works include Boris Savkinov, Renegade on the Left, Trust No One, The Secret World of Sidney Riley, Secret Agent 666, Aleister Crowley, British Intelligence and the Occult, and Wall Street and the Russian Revolution, 1905-1925. Richard is the author of numerous articles on revolutionary Russia, intelligence and national security, the journal for the study of anti-Semitism, American communist history, the historian, New Dawn, and many other publications. He's been interviewed on numerous programs and has been a commentator consultant for the History Channel, the International Spy Museum. We should ask him about that. There is an international spy museum? Hmm. Radio Liberty and documentaries produced by the Russian Cultural Foundation. He's also, if I might add, the uh, resident historian for The Other Side of Midnight. So, Dr. Spence, Rick, as you love to be called, welcome back. Thanks for having me on. Well, as my grandmother used to say, uh, it's nice being had. <laughs> anyway, um, this is an incredibly contentious subject we're tackling tonight. So 